Hey YouTube, it's your beekeeper here. There's another installment of the repair work I'm doing on the Yamasa band mill slash sawmill fuel tank. And I'm gonna go ahead and do this one again in a voiceover narrative because I have my earphones in right now listening to some music. This is all very therapeutic to me and we'll, we'll get into that a little bit later. Why I didn't feel like talking when I was making this video. So I cut the patch out with that, with that cutoff wheel because it creates a pretty narrow kerf which will make welding things back together easier. There's the tube that blew out. I mean, I, honestly, I, I didn't, I didn't enter into the inner tube project thinking that it would actually pull that, push that dent out because the dent seemed in to be some pretty formidable spots of the tank, real strong um, broke areas, you know, the, the corners and stuff like that. But I thought I'd give it a whirl. Why not? So I cut it out. We're going to take a look at the inside of the tank here in a second. It's really, really clean. Check out the sleeve. This is a sleeve I was talking about in the last video. It's probably, I believe it's to keep the splashback of the fuel when you're riding the bike from coming up against the tank, but it also created a really tight area for that tube to come down. And, uh, and that's fine. So here we are just going to, and I'm not a body man, so I'm probably doing this wrong and that's okay. Um, I've done a lot of body work in the past. I've done really nice body work in the past, truth be told, when I put my mind to it but I don't do it every day and I'm not a body man. I've actually done complete paint jobs. My 66 GTO I painted uh, as a young man with a single stage Centauri Midnight Black, but I painted a few cars over the years, but I'm not a painter and I'm not a body man, so I'm just beating metal right here because it feels good to, to bang on stuff and make noise. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll know what kind of year 2020 has been for me and it, it's been crappy for everybody honestly, un unless you're some big corporate wig that's making money off this whole scamdemic, but, uh, but that's, but I digress. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll know what's going on. Be cowboy on Instagram. If you do, I recommend, uh, if you do f put in a follow request, please, I recommend that you shoot me a message, um, direct message and tell me you're not a robot because my account has been attacked by robots. And all I do is get 12 or 13 follow requests a day of uh, of these alleged women with their boobs hanging out and they're, and they're, you know, I'm looking at their undercarriage and stuff. And I just do bulk deletes when I, I see those, you know, if I don't go on Instagram for a few days, I've got 30 follow requests and I just cancel them all. So if you do want to follow me and see what's going on kind of on my day to day stuff, I'm not going to post on my YouTube channel, check out B cowboy, check out the Instagram link on my homepage and then uh, follow up your follow requests with a message. I would appreciate that. So I don't delete you. But what are we doing here? We're just banging stuff out here. We're banging metal out. Oop, I dropped it. We're getting the metal close. And uh, I probably could if I if I found a replacement take for this thing. But I, this is my time. This is my evenings. And this is how my therapy is. I put my ears in and I close the door to my shop and I just bang on metal and I burn metal. And don't take anything by the shirt that I'm wearing either. That I could give a crap about professional sports. That shirt was given to me for free, and it's a shop shirt. So, um, so there's that. Yeah. So I do have a bucket of hammering tools, some stretchers, some shrinkers, some rounders, yada, yada, yada. I got a bunch of dollies. We're just trying to get this little piece uh, close. And I'm out looking for 100%. This is not a show bike. This is a mountain sawmill, right? I just want the capacity back, the fuel capacity. I bet it's three quarters of a gallon of gas I lost in the course of that dent, or maybe a full gallon. It's hard to say because it was caved in pretty good. Um, but I'm also, good job, buddy, dropping it again. But I'm also going to add balancing tubes, and I've talked about it in previous videos that the, the backbone of this tank, that tunnel is so high that the fuel cannot normally balance, equalize out, especially not on a stationary. Okay, so we're picking up on this couple days later and I got the panel really close I have an old uh, some old sheet metal like a fender sheet metal I'm gonna cut some strips that I could use so I'm not just butt welding these but this is really really close to where it's got to be I probably increased the fuel capacity I don't know two-thirds of a gallon maybe three-quarters of a gallon that thing was pretty smashed and now we're back out to where we've got to be I'm going to give it a light, obviously, strip the paint off it. Uh, there's just a little more fine tune, but I think I can get, as I weld things in, I can kind of bang it and knock it around a little bit. I'm going to pull this out just a little bit more. It was getting late last night, and I didn't want to be banging around on this thing. Inside of the tank's in pretty good shape. 
Um, but I am going to add these. Before I start welding on that, I'm going to add these little barbed brass dealy boos here. Put a couple in them, one there and one there, and then I'm going to run an equalizing tube. So we're going to do that first. And then when I, I'm going to solder those in, some acetylene. Did some interesting body work here, obviously, where the uh, Yamaha emblem was. There's someone's been here before. A little bit of Bondo. Yep, I am not, well, I may, but I'm probably not going to do Bondo on this. It's a sawmill. We'll see. We'll be right back. Let me get this set up to drill some holes and put a little solder in there. All right, so the game plan here is to drill a hole. I believe it was quarter inch hole, maybe three sixteenths, but a tiny hole. And then I'm gonna take a center punch that is uh, tapered and I'm gonna enlarge the hole with the taper of the center punch. And what that in my mind is telling me that gives me more material for the solder to stick to. If I were to drill a perfectly sized hole for those brass fittings to slip in, you're soldering in essentially into the edge of the tank versus now I by tapping it in and we'll see it here in a minute I'm just kind of prepping the area here for welding but by tapping the hole larger I've created a velocity stack type shape in the tank and then that just gives me more surface for that nip to fit into as well as the solder to stick to and spoiler alert it worked out quite well What else I got? Oh, oh, there it is. There's the punch. Probably should have watched this clip before I started this voiceover. <laughs> Stupid. Aye, aye, aye. So I'm just kind of shaping it in there. We're just giving it a couple whacks. The problem that I'm coming in, I'm right there finding, is that on that cut side of the tank, it's it's just caving in the, because there, there's no structural support with that patch being cut out. But it's not really a problem. Give a sharp tap with that ball peen and then just kind of push that edge back just like that life is good and then what we do what we like there's a squirrel in my pocket what I do is I take a socket that fits uh, over the barb itself and rests against because there's a there's a collar like in the middle of that barb fitting right so the hose doesn't go all the way through and I tap it in place with the socket so I'm not mashing the end of what I'm doing here now is I'm sanding and it's all about cleaning right if you want a good solder joint you want in addition to a mechanical advantage right you sanding I'm sanding the brass fitting there I'm sanding the whole area around the tank where I'm going to be soldering in addition to mechanical advantage you want clean and clean is clean to be clean that is mechanical advantage and clean are your two friends so I'm just using rubbing alcohol it's 90% not that it doesn't matter if it's 90, but I'm just saying that's what I'm using. But alcohol works really well at pulling grease and oils out of metal. And that's what I've done. I've tapped those in place. I think I'm looking for a socket. Yeah, I'm looking for an appropriate socket there. I'm just going to give it a final seat. And then we're going to bust out the acetylene torch. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm using silver solder. I'm using acetylene and I'm using um, an acid core rosin, the same type of rosin you'd use on a radiator. And I did that because of the brass metal, the dissimilar metals. I really wanted to make sure that I had a good etch and I had good contact because I really don't need any fuel leaks. So unfortunately that powdered rosin there got somehow got a little moisture into that container and it's, it's a little more solid than I want it to be. So I, that's just mending solder, silver solder, same type same composition there um, and it really doesn't take a lot of heat because it's a small quarter inch barb fitting and it's thin sheet metal i probably could have gotten away with using propane torch maybe probably but the nice thing about this tiny little tip is that it's it's small it focuses the heat right where i need it to be the propane tips that turbo torch i have for my propane tip they tend to splatter the flame and i just didn't want to create too much of an issue which is see this is funny here because this is how dumb I am right this is the bottom of the tank on a sawmill fuel tank that's going to be used in the middle of the mountains I'm not taking it to sawmill shows right but here we are I'm, I'm dressing the edge of the solder to make it look nice even though once you paint it and once you put a tube on it and you once you install it you will never ever see your solder joint again 
that's just the way my brain works because um, I like the way it looks so there you go it's my time and that's how I spend it so a little bit of heat I'm welding it from the bottom up that seemed to actually work better good penetration because you can see the solder just kind of squeak through the hole it's perfect so it won't exchange if there any crud gets on the bottom of the tank the crud will stay on the bottom of the tank and it won't balance perfect it's perfect I'm real happy with how well that's stuck all right now to rip some or to make some strips of sheet metal and uh, weld this thing back together yay So I mentioned earlier in this video that this entire video was shot over the course of about a month and a half and this tank's been sitting for a few couple of weeks and you see it's got some flash rust because you know you live by the water it's what you get and it's fine I, I'm going to clean the welds up really good I was really happy with how this 030 gas wire welded I think it would have welded nicer with 025 but I just I didn't feel like changing it out honestly. I've got two MIG welders, one has 030, one has 035, so I can just flip-flop welders back and forth depending on what I'm doing. Um, so either I have to replace the wire or I need to find another welder, a third welder, and just keep 025 in there. So I'm probably just going to find a third welder because I'm a dummy like that. So I'm going to sand this entire tank down because I'm planning on painting the entire tank. Do a little bit of hand sanding because some of these, some of these curves and bends are uh, a little tricky for a flat sander. I think I do get a palm sander here in a minute just to make sure I've got a good bite in there because there's a lot of paint on this tank. There's uh, Bondo on this tank from the previous owner. I, I, got, I don't have any history on this bike. I, I got it at a tow yard auction, but they definitely did some body work on this in the past. And I just wanted to make sure I had a consistent sand on the flatter areas of the tank and I'll come back and hand sand it. But you'll see in the next video that I do take a two part epoxy plumber's epoxy that's rated for gasoline and I, I, I go over the entire weld uh, just to make sure there's no pinholes in there I, I'm pretty confident that the weld is tight I didn't pressure test the tank because I don't care that much because I knew I was going to do um, this two-part epoxy on there that's gasoline rated but you see the dings there in the front of the tank I'm not even going to address that because it ain't a biggie but we'll get into that in the next video and um, yeah, we're just going to keep cleaning and prepping, do a little hand sanding in some of the areas that in those dings there that the flat sander doesn't get to. Let me see, I got my ears on. I've got my mountain man beard going. Woof. All right, stay tuned for the next video. Appreciate you guys watching. Got to go, got to run. See you.